we really don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. And that's Mm -hmm. through those neural pathways that are very unique to each of us based on our life experiences. And of course they can change over time and they get solidified over time. And that's why we're triggered, but it's triggering because it's a stress response connected to pieces that are holding us in stress that aren't healed and processed. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Ancient Health Podcast. I'm your host today, Dr. Chris Motley. And today we have a special guest, and she comes all the way from Utah talking about her snowdress in the coldness, but she has very important information about the emotional health of an individual. And it's Ashley Delello. And Ashley, thank you so much for joining us today here on the podcast. Honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, I want to jump forward and give the people what they want to hear and give you a, an intro. And we're going to go into your story. And I think many individuals out there with emotional fatigue and emotional problems really need to hear this because uh, we know that the emotional field is one of the biggest or one of the main contributors to health issues in our world today. So let's start. Ashley DeLello is the founder and creator of Bio-Emotional Healing, a revolutionary healing method based in neuroscience that has helped her clients around the world finally break free from the emotional trauma limiting beliefs, anxiety, and chronic pain to thrive in their lives. Despite being told by the doctors that she would not live past her teenage years, she refused to give up and discovered the secret to renewing the mind-body connection. She became an elite athlete, TV and Broadway star, entrepreneur, mind coach, and keynote speaker. That is great accomplishments, Ashley. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, I think everybody wants to hear what you had to say. Yeah, well, I'm the whole message of being here that I hope as we dive into my story and and my work of emotional healing is that we're just far more powerful than we've been led to believe because my whole life has been one limitation after another and they were very real and mm-hmm. I've had two life altering health experiences and I'm still here. And that is how powerful we each have and that's why I love the brain so much. Mm -hmm. is that we all have, of course, our own unique strengths and challenges, and we have different intellect and talents, but we all have this incredible brain and the functionalities of it are the same for each of us. Unless you have true mental illness or brain injury, we all have this incredible brain that communicates with our body and accessing its power is just something that we all can do. And that's why I'm so passionate about my work and teaching people how to access that to, to heal, whether more their root is physical or mental or emotional, or usually it's all because we know no system in the body works alone. I love uh, the fact that you just uh, said that they don't never work alone. And I'm so thankful because uh, in practice at times in my clinic, there'll be times when a person needs more structural work or more chemical work or more emotional work. And, you know, having respect for each section of the body is what makes a holistic practitioner or makes the whole realm of holistic medicine what it is today. And I think many people out there that are in holistic in mind, they know that they want to be able to keep all of the areas covered. Mm -hmm. One of the main areas I see that they'll go, okay, I know how to take all the supplements. I know how to get things tested, but there's some form or some realm in our culture today, even in holistic medicine, they go, well, I guess the emotional or the mind and brain is some kind of far off distance thing that I can't attain or actually train or help reprogram. First, I know you can because of your story and seeing the evidence that you show through neuroscience, but could you tell us a bit about your story about the two events that occurred? Because many people out there are saying, I'm going through trauma right now. I'm hurting and I don't know how to break free from this pattern. Can you tell us about your story? Yeah. So it's a long one. And so I'm going to surmise kind of 25 years um, Mm -hmm. into a brief synopsis. Mine started back when I was 13 years old Mm -hmm. and I literally went from the epitome of health, dancing five hours a day to overnight fighting for my life. And if we, that was almost 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. So let's also understand we were living in a very different timeframe with functional medicine, the access to it, the um, ideas around it. There was no podcasts. There was no social media, YouTube, 
So to find any type of holistic practitioner or functional medicine was was research. And I came from a complete Western medical family. And so the, the ideas were like someone with dreadlocks burning incense, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause it was a very different world 27 years ago and, and access to it. So that was, it was such a journey because literally overnight, um, like I said, I was fighting for my life. And I, I of course went to all the doctors, hospitals, and I had a rare viral infection that mm -hmm. no one could diagnose medically no one could treat mm -hmm. my organs were shutting down my skin was yellow from my liver shutting down my hair mm -hmm. started falling out i had pain in my joints and muscles you know the whole gamut of symptoms that you can think about and the hardest thing about it of course was it came out of nowhere mm -hmm. my nickname was the energizer bunny i was 13 years old and now i'll never forget the day where the doctor came in and it was one of those really sterile rooms. You know, I was mm -hmm. telling you how nice your background was and how healing this was one of those white, sterile, cold metal, you know, everywhere rooms, um, that just feel very ominous to begin with. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had one of those old paper robes on, you know, that they used to put you in oh, all the time, the worst. You, the worst, you would just move and it would tear. You know, yeah. and then you're, you're trying and you're freezing and you're, yeah, moving. you don't want to touch the seat. Cause it's going to be cold. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And cause I remember, so I'm in that already really uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. The doctor comes in on those stools, you know, those stools that they have in it. He, he rolls it up next to me and he looks at me and he says, you need to accept you're not going to live past your teenage years. Oh, wow. You're never going to dance again. You're never going to get married, never have kids. And he said, the sooner that you accept this, the easier it's going to be to come to terms with your reality. Just like that wow. straight to me. And I remember, I mean, all you can imagine felt every emotion you can even contemplate at that moment. Also mm -hmm. just what has happened to my life. I'm 13. How is this my reality? And I, I remember just feeling like the wind was taken out of me. And it, I, I thank my mother for not interjecting because I know she wanted to. And she kind of gave me this space to decide how I was going to respond to him. Mm -hmm. And I remember taking probably the biggest deep breath of my life and just looking at him and saying, I don't accept this. And, and the other part of the story, which maybe people can relate to is they actually sent in a psychologist to talk to me, Oh man! telling me that I was living in denial of my reality. And I remember looking at the psychologist and I'm 13, remember? So I'm, I'm looking at these experts. I'm a 13 year old mm -hmm. little girl. And I remember telling her, I know I'm dying better than anyone. <laughs> I, I can feel it, but I mm -hmm. also deep down inside feel that if I just accept I'm dying, then any chances of survival are gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember we walked out of that hospital with no plan, no idea what we were doing, but that's really when I started to really understand the intricate mind body connection, because I know what it's like to be afraid to go to sleep, to be so sick that literally I felt like if I surrendered the conscious will to live, Mm -hmm. my body wouldn't make it through the night. And so I would will myself to stay awake. And that's when I knew how powerful that was, but also it leads me to my work today, because as you can imagine, I lived in that type of survival for four years, mm -hmm. which had a profound impact on my brain and nervous system and how oh. they operated. Now which I didn't know. You didn't know, like when you had the, the power, because many people out there, when they're going through the trauma and you say you actually willed yourself to stay awake, um, I think that's the beauty of like neuroscience. And I know that's how you process it through your, your healing program. When you started that journey and realized like you could actually influence your physical body through the way you were thinking, um, what, how did that shape your path as in? When was the time? This is my next question. Mm -hmm. When you started to live, well, not started to, you lived past your teen years. Mm -hmm. You did accomplish that. And you realized, yeah, it was my mind and my brain that did this. What what then was the pathway to you becoming a practitioner, like creating this system and creating this healing? I know it's maybe I don't want to jump too far forward. Yeah. But when did you realize you're like, I totally defied all the odds? And what was the age? What was that feeling like? 
Well, it was, it was, it was such a gradual process. And, and with that, and with your work, that's when I also, we, we sought out how to support my immune system. Right. So I was like, I'm yeah. going to, the power of my mind also partnered with supporting my immune system to fight this virus. Yeah. Right. And so those two together, cause I'm always a big proponent, right. It's not just yeah. the body. It's not just the mind. They have a feedback feedback loop between both of them. So you have to address both, yeah. but I remember, I remember just starting to literally, it was so gradual. And I think that's really important because we all want to heal yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it was literally being able to get from my bed to the bathroom. Wow. And that had to be an enormous win. And then from my house to a few houses down the road and then around the block, you know, it took me six years to get back to dancing to have the health and strength after four years, it was like, okay, I can feel my body's no longer shutting down, but then I had the process of rebuilding strength and it took six years, but then I was healthy and I went back to dancing and that, that was just miraculous, right? That was this, this girl who couldn't lift a finger, who was so sick some days she couldn't speak, which is a scary place to be when you realize the energy it takes to speak to now being able to dance. And inevitably, like in my career, 12 hours a day, when I was on shows like So You Think You Can Dance and Broadway eight shows a week. And that was just this moment of, oh my gosh, look at this. I've truly not just defied the odds to live, but to become so healthy and strong and capable. And I knew the power of the mind, but it took a second life altering experience for me to really understand it. Cause I had to, and to come to my work. So to answer your question in 2016, I'm at the top of the mountain, right? Mm-hmm. I, this is, I've defied the odds and you think like I've done it, right? I've lived something few people will. And then I got knocked down again and I went into a second hip surgery and expected it to go like my first one, which I went Mm -hmm. back to my career eight months later and it failed. And I went from literally an elite athlete top of my career to now I can't walk and I have nerve pain spreading throughout my whole body. I have Mm. a a two-year-old daughter. I can't lift now. I can't even hold a book. I'm in chronic nerve pain, which means of course I'm not sleeping, which means Mm -hmm. then it starts to have profound impact on my health. I'm in chronic stress. And because I had gone through what I'd gone through before, I thought I'm going to do all the things, right? Everything Eastern, Western, holistic, alternative, regenerative. I'm doing all the different types of injection, stem cell, and, you know, prolotherapy and all the things you can think of Mm -hmm. and nothing's helping. And my pain is getting worse. And what I'm being told again is this is your life now. It was very deja vu, but at a whole new level. Cause now I'm, I lost my career. Mm. I have a daughter I can't take care of. I'm married. I have a business responsibilities. And what everyone told me is it just seems like your nervous system flipped a switch into pain. Mm. And I'm being diagnosed with chronic regional pain syndrome and fibromyalgia and interstitial cystitis. And I'm being told literally, I can't make this stuff up. You're not getting any younger. It's only downhill from here the best you can do is manage pain the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, after trying all the tools and it not working, it seemed like everybody was right. And Mm -hmm. I remember one night I just got to really the depths of where I'd ever been in my life because Mm -hmm. living in pain is the most worst type of hell I wouldn't wish on anyone. And of course Mm -hmm. that type of physical pain leads to unbelievable emotional and mental pain because it takes your capacity to live your life. And I hit rock bottom and from someone who had fought for their life adamantly and refused to die. I got to a place where I was like, God, if you want to take me because this existence is hell. And my family, you know, we were spending all our money trying to treat me and do all these injections. And I remember that night, I just got to this place of, I can't find the answer outside of me what am I supposed to do with this? And I remember just this voice, like, okay, my nervous system flipped a switch into pain. I'm going to figure out how to flip it back. 
Mm-hmm. And that's where I dove really deep into neuroscience and pain science and the mind body connection. And, and truthfully, it was all driven from an absolute desperation to save my own life. And then as I was studying, I realized the effects of what I'd gone through when I was younger mm-hmm. was also impacting my brain and nervous system today and how it was responding to that felt hip surgery and that my body literally had gone into survival mode on overdrive, not just because of my present experience, but it's memory of fighting for my life of all the emotions and the PTSD and worry around my body and my health that literally had been stored within me for 20 years. And I, I wow. realized I'd li- essentially been living in survival at a subconscious level. And that's wow. where I know so many people find themselves, whether it's from past trauma or prolonged mental or emotional stress, right? Or current stress. And that's where I realized the root cause of so much of our physical symptoms and our mental and emotional stress is this overly sensitized nervous system that is operating a stress response subconsciously all the time. And until we get that to turn off, then we can do all of the things and they can be helpful, but it's like pulling out the weeds and leaving the root that's causing the alarm bells in the body. And that's Mm -hmm. what led me to develop by emotional healing. We're going to talk about that. I want to talk about what it is and how this can help other individuals. And I, I love the fact that, um, you, you show the power of the brain. Like when we talk about memory and I'm just reiterating, like when you have gone through the six years of hell and having to relearn how to do simple things after the first bout and then second bout, I, I think the audience, you know, loves to hear like how, or wants to hear that your body the whole time had to create a certain type of not only emotional response, like, but it's teamed up with biochemical responses. How do you adapt after six years and how do you express that, you know, that, how do you handle that? And then you have that program still running probably in your brain of all the responses and all the same biochemistry from years ago. And now all of a sudden you get it triggered again and you're like, Oh no, I'm remembering the same pattern. So for all of you out there, when you get triggered she's going to talk about this and that's a hard thing to realize that you can store old memory, like having a dirty closet where you have to go clean it out. Mm-hmm. So Ashley, what is the bioemotional healing? Like, what is this technique and what are all the type of people you can help with this? Yeah. So the, the just baseline answer is, is essentially it's, it's based in neuroscience, but to partner with the brain and nervous system to kind of restore that proper balance between the rational and emotional brain, because Mm -hmm. when we're stuck living in survival, Mm -hmm. the emotional brain's winning right? The emotional brain is running the show. And that's why you're constantly triggered. And because all of those emotional memories are stored in the brain in, you know, different areas and in the limbic system, and it has no time clock, which I know, Mm. you know, and that's really important because it's constantly cross-referencing your data bank of history in real time on how to best protect you today. And the way the brain protects us is through stress responses. And that's such a paradigm shift your physical symptoms, your anxiety, your depression can often just be the brain's desire to protect you, not just from what's happening today, but what's happened in the past that wasn't resolved, that altered how your brain and nervous system functioned, how it protected you each day, how it saw the, its lens, it saw the world through, your life through, your possibility through, your body through. So We have to go back and address the physical, but also the psychological processes that have contributed to making your brain and nervous system stuck in the subconscious stress response that has essentially become hardwired. And that's kind of infuriating. And I'm going to tell you, the more I understood this, I was kind of ticked off at first because I thought, wait, I've already gone through all of this. (laughs) Like I, (laughs) I survived it. But you're telling me to truly get free of it. I have to do the work to change its impact on my brain and nervous system. Mm. And until I do that, that's still impacting me. Like I, it was kind of made me upset at first. Cause, and I think people can also relate to that. It's like, I've already gone through so much. And now you're telling me it's not as simple as surviving it. It's not as simple as the right treatment or nutrition, but literally I have this brain and nervous system stuck in a program 
that is perpetuating my health issues, my anxiety, my depression, my constant stress and overwhelm. And so at first I was kind of upset that more was being asked of me. Right. But then I felt empowered Mm -hmm. because it meant I could do something about it. And I wasn't just reliant on something outside of me, but I had this capacity within my own brain and body to turn off alarm bells. So I couldn't just heal now, but I really could live the rest of my life differently. And that, that is a beautiful point. That was the moment of good job. This is our greatest source of power. And I'm not helpless because I think most people, whether they're struggling more physically or mentally or emotionally, it's a constant state of powerlessness and this urgency to find help outside of you and the answers and the solutions. And, and not that that isn't important and it absolutely is, but our greatest power and capacity is within and really understanding that and harnessing it allows you to step into your life with a new sense of possibility. And so that's why this can help really anyone. And it's like with the brain and nervous system connection um, with this, like you say, I love how you talked about everything having no time frame within like limbic system and how it's basically, like you say, we're trying to connect pieces in programs and the body's like, I don't care if it happened yesterday, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the programs are still like a spider web. I'm still trying to grab information from each experience that I've had. And I'm trying to adapt to it to keep you safe. I'll keep myself safe, basically. Mm -hmm. So you may have already answered this, like with the brain and the nervous system, when you do bioemotional healing, um, how does this all take an effect when you're talking about the mental emotional field? Like, are there certain techniques or I want you to go through this the way you want to, like, is there certain pathways, certain um, uh, step-by-step protocols that help with this relationship? Absolutely. And the key that I realized is we're, we're living in a time frame where it's really, really popular to talk about rewiring. Mm-hmm. And, and that is very true. And I, and we do that through by emotional healing, but the first steps, so it's a nine week process, but the first steps and the groundwork that has to be laid is that your system has to feel safe to start to even rewire. Mm. So you have to understand a system stuck in whatever that stress response is more physical, mental, emotional, your brain thinks that's what's protecting you. Mm. So it's not like your brain is really eager to let go of it as much as it feels like a punishment and it's holding you stuck in your life. Your brain is like, I'm keeping you safe. This is keeping you safe. So the brain's not really excited to stop doing the thing it thinks is keeping you safe. And in, in my instance, and most people, that sense of survival and that constant sense of perpetual fight or flight response and seeing the world through threat, the brain thinks that's, what's allowing you to keep surviving. So Mm. before it's going to even accept a new program of running, you have to start to go through the pieces that have made it feel like it has to stay in this stress, start addressing and healing the unresolved emotions, thoughts, belief systems that came from it so that your system from a deep subconscious place can accept and feel like we've worked through that enough to where we can not just live in the past, but start to live today, even with that data bank of memory, right? Because we can yeah. never change that but we have to change the meaning around it by healing all the pieces and unresolved emotions, which is usually one of the biggest components to then for our system to even say, okay, I can accept that we can start to do something different and you're still going to be okay. And that's when now it's open to rewiring. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the emotional piece is so big is that also, if we're going through something really challenging in our life, we are trying to survive it. And so often we're not processing its impact on us. We, we know the impact of what it's done in our life, but we're getting through it. We're surviving it. And that deeper emotional impact that at the time we're like, I don't have time for this, right? I don't have time to sit here and mourn and to cry and to scream and to really process what this has done to my life. I've got to survive it. 
Mm-hmm. And then you survive it. And then you want to go live right after my illness. It's not like I was like, I need to go back and, and I'm a teenager too. And again, nobody really talked about it in this way back then, the way that we're much more aware, mm-hmm. but once you survive something challenging, aren't you like, okay, done, did it. I want to go live my life. <laughs> but that impact on you, your brain and your nervous system is still there just because we don't acknowledge it and process it doesn't mean it goes away. Right. It's the body holds on to all of that and it keeps impacting us. And that's why I believe aside from my second, um, life altering experience, I had a ton of injuries through my professional career. Mm -hmm. And yes, I used my body a lot, but it made no sense because I was the person who, had all the nutrition on place, like all the supplements. I did the ice baths way back when, before everybody was talking about it. Right. And I would be the one to get hurt. And it was so frustrating because it didn't make sense. But now after studying the brain nervous system, I realized that subconscious stress response was always running and that put stress in my body. And that's a great point because would you compare it? Actually, I'm just asking like, the memory, like it would be like building a muscle. Like if you adapted from the original trauma, all these years, you are basically in a sense building muscle. Like you're the brain's keeping you safe. No, I got you. You're going to hurt yourself. So you build up programs around the original trauma or, or pathways around the original trauma to keep you safe. So it's like building muscle and every day for six years, your body's like, oh, I'm building, I'm building, I'm yeah. building. And now you're saying like, no, we got to break down some of those walls. Yeah. And you're like, no, I just build my muscles for six years to handle what I just, I handled back then. And, and so people are like, why is it hard to let go? Because you built that adaptation up. I think it's a really great point because sometimes in the office, what we'll find is we'll know that a person, like you said, had an injury and literally you'll find muscular trains in the body where they're all, if they're an active or inactive and you can turn a person's ankle a certain way and their neurology will say, oh, that reminds me probably of the sprain I had four years ago. And all the same muscles that turned off from that original pain shut off, yeah. but it activates other muscles to splint. Mm-hmm. And so you'll find them, some get hyperactive and some get really weak. It's it's similar, I guess, in the way how the brain protects. Exactly. Now, it's a great thought. Now, you were talking about how it protects you and how it's hardening. And, and I think it's great with your research. You guys got to check out her website and we're going to tell you about it because she has some really great info. When you talk about hardening the patterns, mm-hmm. you talk about plasticity. You were mentioning that before. What is this whole concept of neuroplasticity hardening and how does it affect trauma in, in the body exactly. with health? Yeah. So our, our brain and nerve system have this incredible capacity, right? Called neuroplasticity to change itself in response to experience. So neuroplasticity has this, this beautiful piece. It's, it's how any of us develop talent and mastery and skill, right? Because Mm -hmm. our, our brain and nervous system learn through practice. Mm -hmm. But the flip side of that is that it also allows us to get stuck in a chronic stress cycle Mm -hmm. because the more any pathway is activated over and over again. And that could be an emotional stress. That could be a mental, that could be a physical, the more the brain and nervous system get programmed to do that again in the future. Mm. So when you go through a prolonged injury or illness or mental or emotional stress, it's like you're giving your nervous system practice to send, <laughs> oh, and, to send and receive stress signals right? So the Mm. longer that goes on, the more solidified it becomes because the other part of our brain is that it wants to do as many things reflexively as possible, which means anything it's done before. So the more it's practiced something, the more it gets programmed to do that again, just because it's familiar to it. And now, yes, your brain and nervous system have learned through all those years of practicing and sending those stress signals to keep doing that. And that becomes the default. And because it's familiar, the brain thinks it's safe because the brain thinks anything that is familiar is safer than something that is unfamiliar Mm -hmm. because it can predict it. It can count on it. Even if that prediction is pain, even if it is anxiety, 
it, the brain knows what it looks like and therefore it feels safe in doing it. It's, it's crazy because the brain will seek the hell it knows over the unknown health and vitality and calm and confidence and, and peace because the brain's like, I don't know what that looks like. I've been practicing and sending these neural signals for all these years. And look, oh, you've man. survived, right? The brain's like, you're here. You survived. I did a good job. Let's keep doing that. And so that neuroplasticity, that is amazing and was a huge part of me becoming a professional dancer also was what was used to hardwire my system in distress and pain and anxiety around my health and my brain believing that was the best way to keep me surviving. Well, it's just like a data bank, right? Actually, I mean, it'd be like if you kept placing files into a folder in your computer and you just consistently kept putting that old programmer it hardening, it means that that file would get bigger and bigger and take up more RAM memory. So your body's like literally has like a, a file that's just huge yeah. amounts of gigabytes. And you're like, oh, but I want you to calm down now. Yeah, right. Uh, I only Can have a few megabytes that? of calm in my life right now. So <laughs> it's really like a data bank where you're like you're mm -hmm. saying, you're shoving it all into this. It's hardwiring your brain. And are you talking to actually like really like there's actually stiffening of the brain, like they can get hard set in the brain. And so your brain is actually like these pathways are um, put in stone. I hate to put it that way, but I was reading a report about how once you probably, I'm probably repeating what you just said, but once that hardware is going, you can grow new axons and new nerves from that original pathway that's been growing. And you're only going to probably perceive reality through the old pain that you had. Like, is that like you, like you just said that, but I mean, that's how my brain thinks new pathways are grown. You go, Oh, I perceive reality based on the old trauma I had basically. Yep. Right. Cause, and that's wow. where I always tell my clients, we, we really don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are right. And that's mm -hmm. through those neural pathways that are very unique to each of us based on our life experiences. And of course they can change over time and they get solidified over time. And that's why we're triggered because it's pointing to the places that aren't healed but are still set in our pathways on how we need to live and operate, but it's triggering because it's a stress response connected to pieces that are holding us in stress that aren't healed and processed. Okay. So when we, we perceive the world as we are, I love um, one of the thoughts I just wrote down as in related to what you were talking about. Now, when we talked about shaping your beliefs, I just want to make uh, clear to the audience, like, so we're saying like whenever we have an emotional trauma, I'm asking because I wrote this down, we have the emotional trauma and that could – we feel something like you're feeling horrible from your you know, your disease, your injury, and that can shape from hardening of the brain your belief system, and then that can change your behavior basically. Like you, you can change your behavior from that. Is that correct? Absolutely, and that's, okay. that's, what, that's what trauma is. Right. There's mm -hmm. clear incidents of trauma, but trauma to the brain is anything that changes the brain. So people, and then they start seeing the world differently, acting different. So let's say mm -hmm. somebody had confidence in themselves. And I, I've had clients with this instance, right? They had confidence in themselves. They had hope in the world. And then they go through something like a family member, member committing suicide. And now all of a sudden that experience alters how they see themselves in the world. And now they see the world through limitation mm. and lack of possibility and lack of love and acceptance. And it altered their brain to the point of now where they do see differently and therefore they act differently in their life. And that's the impact of experiences. And that's why it's very individualized because two mm. people can go through a similar experience mm -hmm. but because of all the other factors in their life and who they are and how they integrate that experience and the beliefs around it completely shape how they move forward from it. Wow. This is amazing. So you can basically, I don't like the word you use the term in, but the way you perceive an issue, if you can change the way your body perceives the trauma, then you could eventually change your belief system and the pathway of your life. Exactly. Absolutely. Wow. wow. Because okay. at the end of the day, the brain's wired to validate beliefs. Oh, 
That's so insane. this is great. <laughs> When you do the emotional, the, the nine steps, is that right? The nine steps. It's nine weeks. Nine, nine uh-huh. weeks, I'm sorry. Yep. And when we talk about understanding um, how trauma and how like your adversity impacts your nervous system, when you go through the first steps, maybe I'm jumping ahead. What is like one of the main things that you tell individuals? Like, what's our first step? Like people are going to say, like, what, it, what would I first start to do? And you talked about facing it, but. What's the first initial step that you would suggest to people? Yeah, the first step is kind of the switch from most of us are really aware of what our stress response looks like, right? Mm -hmm. We're aware, oh, I'm triggered, I've got anxiety, or my heart is racing, or I'm feeling weak, or I've got a spike in pain. We're aware of the response, but we're not so aware of the pieces that created it right? So it's becoming the observer of you, your internal dialogue, your life, what's happening in your body beyond just, I'm having this symptom or this experience and I've got to get it to go away, right? That's kind of our programming because it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling pain or symptom or anxiety, I got to shut it down as quick as possible, Mm -hmm. right? And it's about managing that versus instead of just reacting, because that's what most of us do, we react to the same thoughts, the same feelings, the same circumstances. It's becoming that observer of what just happened and and what, how does that remind me of something that maybe happened in the past? Mm -hmm. Why am I so triggered in this? What am I feeling in my body? Is there something physical or did something emotional just happen that now my brain is registering that with an increase in pain or Mm -hmm. symptoms, right? Because the brain Mm. perceives physical and emotional stress almost identically. The same areas of the brain activate. So physical issues obviously can create emotional, but emotional can create physical, right? There's, and and it's very messy because the brain cares equally about both of them. So very often we think, oh, it's just physical or it's just emotional. And the reality is there's a constant interplay between the two. Oh, like to me, uh, Ashley, correct me if I'm wrong. I like this when you say there's a constant interplay. Like when you think that things are really stuffed away and there's this interplay, like I, I like to work with infections. That's what I do most of the time, you know, but to me, it sounds like, okay, so let's say I have a ton of infections from a particular, you know, uh, toxins from a particular infections. And the thing that I find is that individuals will have low levels of chronic inflammation due to the amount of toxicity that's buried deep within the tissue. And the only way that they probably are going to get rid of that low-lying inflammation is to bring the toxicity up to the surface so they actually become aware of the toxicity. And that's the struggle, in my opinion, with toxins. It's like you have to go – you don't have to hurt. I'm just saying you have to be aware of how much you bring up to the surface at a time. And I would say it's like how much can your liver liver handle – I, I'm assuming I would, I would think the brain could be similar to like a trauma. It's like you, like you said, I observe this, how you have to bring it to the surface to actually let you observe it. Is that like to actually mm-hmm. help you process through some of it? Because if you don't, you're just going to get the inflammation or the, the residue from what's buried deep. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why we, it is a progressive system similar to what I know you do with your clients, because if we do too much, too fast, and you overload the liver, right? The body, then your brain is just reaffirming the threat response around the toxins. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And, good. and, and you have to start and, and trauma and deeply rooted emotions that are keeping your system in stress are the same way, right? If you, and that's where sometimes some of the um, emotional work that I see that almost forces people into this deep, like bring it all up. It can, I've had clients that have tried that before and they end up in the ER because their brain gets hyper locked down and protecting because it's too much too fast. And that's Mm -hmm. why this process is so effective because you're doing it with your system in, in the way, because before the brain will even maybe go down to the deepest root. And I know that's the same way with, with toxicity, maybe the biggest component of what's keeping people in, in sick is going to be the last one to show up, right? Because your body has to kind of work through the other layers that aren't as significant so that it has the resources to 
deal with the bigger issue. Mm -hmm. And that's how emotions and trauma are, right? We're like onions that we have to start peeling off some of the other layers that are significant, but maybe not as significant so that your brain and system have the threshold to get to some of those deeper roots and feel like they can let them go at that point. That is amazing. So with the system, I know because they need to go to your website to probably go through the whole system, but do you, like many people are there are auditory learners, visual learners, tactile. Do you, with your nine week program, do you go through, is it, I mean, on a, just the basic like mm -hmm. visualization, you know, or is it like a meditation? Is there a point you press? Is there a, a verbalization, like a talking through certain steps or is it different for each person when you go through this? So the, the process itself, which gives me my greatest confidence is it stays now with that. I'm saying at the same with you and your clients, there's always some tweaks, yeah, right. Totally, yeah. With you and your patients, because we are individual. So there's the process, which I know works. And then based on the individual, their personality, all the other factors that make them, them, we do a little tweaking, all the pieces you just said, come into play right? Whether yeah. it is breathing techniques, stimulating vagus nerve or phrenic nerve, right? Getting the brain and nervous system, acti activating it from a physiological standpoint, but also from a brain standpoint, because sometimes you can't just go to the brain. You have to go to the physiology first, because if the physiology is screaming and you're trying to calm down the brain, but the body's telling the brain we're in stress, it's going to override, right? Wow. So that's a good point. It's, it's, it's in a systematic place. And that's where my clients can only access one week at a time because I, a huge part, and I was my own Guinea pig is okay. This is a beautiful piece in dealing with emotions or the nervous system. But if you try to go to here first and you haven't laid the groundwork of week one, two, three, four, then your system's going to fight that resist that. And it's going to just re-solidify its fight or flight. So the beautiful piece is that all these different modalities come into play, but in the right order, in the right timeline, in the right combination, but all that my clients can do on their own. And that's, that's the beautiful piece is, is that it, it takes all of it together. So we have, uh, I have a whole process, a portal that my clients access that's private, that has the week by week. Those have recordings from me because I wanted them just to listen, not just watch a screen, but then there's the, this is what you're doing step-by-step. Step. And then I have coaching sessions with my clients every week to then make sure we're connecting and I have constant communication with them because when it comes to changing the brain, it's really important that we're able to keep moving forward and not start something. And then I'm stuck for five days trying to get a hold of you. And so that's why it's a very hands-on process for me with my mm -hmm. clients, but that's why they have such unbelievable results in only nine weeks. I, we're going to talk about how they can get a hold of you and where they can find your information. And um, I guess like, I'm really, really enamored with the information because at times, like with my clients, they will, they will come in and they may have um, emotional traumas that I know that they need to get therapies for. Uh, and I've, I know some acupuncture and acupressure and some different types of emotional techniques. But one thing that's always amazed me actually was that individual to come in and before I could actually ever get to their main symptomatology, um, the, like the, the acupuncture points that I would find would be the most active would be around like, let's say a knee or an ankle and they would have horrible low blood supply. And, and this is just an example. And you can spend almost two visits completely working on all the ligament structures, the bone structures, the muscles. And then you find out, you know, 12 years ago, I, I tore my MCL or my ACL and it's, it shows the power how the brain literally had to send all that neurological information to that knee to keep it stabilized and saying, this is a pretty important subject to me, but I don't have the energy to go process all that informational trauma you just had six years ago. And you go, why would I work on a knee when you have this other emotional trauma that I think is more important? Your body's like, no, there's layers to it, bud. You need to chill out and follow the process. And, and then when you do clean it up, it's like you almost free up neurological space. I, I feel that way. Mm -hmm, and I always mm -hmm. compare it to like an iPhone because I, I can only think about like in those nerd ways. I'm like, 
Well, I've got seven apps running and one of them is literally been running for like the last, you know, seven days. I didn't swipe it off. So it's literally probably pulling my battery pretty hard. Yeah. And you guys like swipe off that and the other ones will work better. And, Mm -hmm. and I, I always think it's great how neurology or technology follows neurology. You know, when they think it's really like, no, 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 they, they got it from the brain. Um, (laughs) um, This has been really, really great and eye-opening because I think people out there, it gives them hope because you know, if they can't release a trauma and, and I'm, no way am I talking on talk therapy or anything like that. I'm saying that if they do certain sure. techniques, they'll go, why can't I let it go? I'm like, well, there could be other avenues where you're not observing, cor- you know, I say correctly, but observing it in a certain angle thing. This is in the pathway. You have to release this before this can be released. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I want you to tell us where they can find you on social media so that they can del- dive more in depth with you. Where can mm-hmm. we find you? Instagram, all yep. tell them. And I'm they sure you'll know. put my name in the show notes. I have a, a name that is not easily spelled. Um, but it's it my website is ashleydelello.com. I can spell that if you want me to. We got um, in the show you know, notes. You got you in the go. show notes. Yeah. My my website's ashleydelello.com. On there, um, there's awesome free training about the brain that I know as you dive in and it goes more particular, you're going to understand better why you're stuck. Mm -hmm. The more you understand how the brain works and the more you do, the more you can actually separate. I'm not just broken, but my brain is stuck in this process of protecting me. Although it feels like punishment, it feels like it's holding me prisoner. It's my brain, not me. And that means I can change it. I am not just stuck or broken. And this is who I am now. This is my body now, but I can partner with it. So there's a free training there. I have a free mind body blueprint there. Mm -hmm. That is a three-step action plan to start disrupting these patterns, this stress response, because people, there's a lot of overwhelm of where Mm -hmm. do I even start? And my goal is also to take something that's super complex, the brain and make it very understandable. So, cause wow. you can't take people already in overwhelm and overwhelm them. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. So it's like, let's take something that's yes. So complex, but we can make it very simple. Cause the brain is also very simple in many, many ways. If you just understand its default wiring. And then my social media is Ashley DiLello. Um, I have a podcast that I'm actually revamping that will be called Bioemotional Healing that I, I started out with Body Freedom Radio. And then I'm like, why am I not calling this Bioemotional Healing? That's that's my work. Um, that's and right. so social media and my website are great places to connect with me. And then if someone is feeling like I need to do this deeper work, I'm stuck. I've done all the things. And that's my other point. You might have awareness, but you actually want to move beyond awareness. <laughs> You actually want to change it. You want to get free of it. You don't want to just be aware of all your triggers and now you got to manage it your whole life, but you actually really want to get beyond it. And if that's you, then you can schedule a free consultation um, from my website because this work is so hands-on that consultation always happens first, just so I can better understand the person and make sure if it's a right fit for both of us, because I can't do this work and I know it's the same for you, but without their active participation, right? I, I don't live inside their life, their, their mind and body. So in order to change their brain and nervous system, I know by emotional healing works, but it only works if they're ready to do the work. That's right. That's right. There's always two, two people that need to meet up when it comes in the journey of health. And um, thank you so much, Ashley. This has been great. Um, And we really appreciate it too, that you've explained it. And I think that that there is increasing uh, awareness and and increasing interest in the actual power of the brain and Mm -hmm. um, how people can actually heal their lives through it. So we want everybody out there that hears this to go and check out her social media And to know that, you know, when she says things are stuck, she's going to explain to you that you can actually help your brain get a little softer, a little mushier and actually create new pathways and things, you know, I I always compare it to ways or your maps, you know, I'm Mm -hmm. like, you know, there's other options out there. You got to be aware of all the possibilities, you know, so um, this, so your life can have some new beliefs. Um, Thank you again for everybody out there. Um, uh, 
please follow her. And we're so thankful you joined us today on this podcast. And uh, Dr. Josh gives him gives you his best, and Courtney does too, Ashley. And um, I love your last name. I know I kind of I didn't tease her in a bad <laughs> way, guys. I thought it sounded like a really good DJ or rap name, Delello. I miss um, my calling. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, she does a little, you know, just some hip hop dancing after this. I'm just playing. Anyway, from all of us here, we're, we really thank you guys. Have a great day. Appreciate it. Thank Ashley. you. Thank you so much. Bye.